Tomorrow marks the start of Remembrance Weekend, when we pause to remember the service and sacrifice of the nation's fallen service people. As part of the BBC's We Were There project, aimed at capturing the memories of veterans, Alan Little has been speaking to some of those who served in World War II. He spoke to Pamela Galloway, who served in the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, Alfred Barney Barnett, who was a gunner in the Royal Air Force, and Stan Minchner, Mincher, who served in the Royal Navy, and talked to them about their recollections of service. I volunteered in the spring of 1942, just a few days really before my 20th birthday. Everybody wanted to be pilots, but they did about a two or three year wait for that. And so I put my name down to be an air gunner. We just thought it'd be like another exercise. What we didn't know, of course, what the opposition would be uh, until the last moment. Yeah. Pamela Galloway joined the Women's Auxiliary Air Force. She was part of a secret operation to disrupt German bombing raids by using radio signals to lure the aircraft off course in what became known as the Battle of the Beams. The wireless operators were able to identify, I suppose you call it the wavelength or the frequency, on which the German bombers were navigating. And so the wireless sending stations would send out a different frequency that would either confuse or make the German bombers uh, follow a different course and the result would be that they would miss their targets. Alfred Barnett, known as Barney, was a gunner in the RAF. He flew more than 80 bombing missions over Germany. Now, Lancaster used to carry one or two cookies, that's 4,000 pounders, in the centre bay. Then outside that, you'd have a few boxes, what they call incendiaries, just for lighting fires. Now, the idea, was to mark the target, throw up some trouble, then drop the incendiaries to create fires. Like the biggest fire I ever saw was at Hamburg. When you're flying, I know this may sound strange, I used to start shaking here, and then when you got there, you were very calm. Amazing. But you go through hell going there, and hell coming back from it. Stan Mincher joined the Royal Navy. He was 18 when he crossed the Channel on D-Day. His task was to deliver tanks to the beaches of Normandy. The first thing we saw uh, at about daylight was the minesweepers coming forward to sweep a channel to the beach. Uh, on the way in, uh, we uh, hit a, a, a landmine. It wasn't a big mine and they blew a hole, but it didn't become a major problem. I could just see the sea wall and the houses beyond it. The initial forces in our area, Juno, were Canadian. They had a disastrous time, and the majority of them were sunk on the beach with a lot of casualties. This was going to be the beginning of the end of the war. We had high hopes. But I, but I was thinking, gosh, if we'd got it wrong, <laughs> that would have been very bad. I'm no ruddy hero, but... Um... There it is all over now. I've got seven bob a day for that. <laughs> that report by Alan Little.